So yes, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I, uh, Dr. Seema is joining. Uh, we are welcoming all our moderator, Dr. Seema, our speaker, Dr. You know, first time blood bank specialty to our continuing diagnostic education series that is CDE. Um, thank you, uh, our uh, secretariat uh, uh, team. So uh, it's a pleasure uh, to have our first CD series in blood bank topic. Thank you, Dr. Rima, for getting us, uh, you know, uh, to meet digitally. <laughs> Dr. You know, Rima uh, is a very, very dear friend of mine. Uh, we go back almost uh, maybe more than 12 to 15 years. She is, uh, uh, I think her name is linked very closely with quality for me. And she, uh, I think she uh, herself is very much into quality 24 by 7, represents a very strong pillar for CAHO Diagnostic Division. She's a lead assessor uh, for, uh, you know, uh, all the audits nationally. She's currently uh, working with, uh, a, you know, fertility clinics based out of Delhi, but also actively working in uh, lab audits, I think every weekend, She's extensively involved herself in uplifting quality in uh, labs and hospitals. So, Reema, I, I wish you all the best for this uh, first episode of yours to do, uh, uh, you know, moderating this uh, wonderful topic of webinar. And I, I'm pretty sure all our delegates who have shown such a great response will uh, definitely enjoy this session under you and Madam. Over to you, Reema. Uh, very good evening, everyone, and thank you, Dr. Parna, so much for this opportunity, and thanks to Kaho for giving me the opportunity to be associated with Kaho and today moderating this session. And it is, in fact, my indeed a great uh, privilege and honor to introduce uh, Dr. Kusum Thakur. I have met her in person, and uh, she is a name in transfusion medicine. Currently, she is working with uh, working as senior consultant and head of department of transfusion medicine at Sriman Super Speciality Hospital, Jalandhar, uh, City of Punjab. And uh, she is a former faculty at GMC Patiala, Amulana Ambala. She is president of uh, IAS BTI Punjab chapter and has many national awards and also organized national conference of uh, Transcon in 2014, which is for transfusion medicine. And she has published many books and she still is con uh, publishing books. She's unstoppable and she has contributed almost six chapters in different published books. And she has uh, 20 publications and also she chairs sessions in national and all international, many international conferences. And she has attended more than 100 academic meets. She's member uh, of IMA and AATM also, and also popularly she keeps giving TV and radio talks on different aspects of transfusion medicine. So I'm hearty welcome Dr. Kusum and uh, over to you uh, to please start this session, the vibrant session and the first of the uh, blood transfusion to in diagnostic series. Over to uh, Before Dr. Seema came, I was just uh, Heartiest thanks to Kaho for inviting me for the session. And uh, I am Dr. Kusum Thakur as uh, Seema. Uh, and thank you, Reema, for such a <laughs> detailed uh, introduction. And uh, as she told, I'm working as senior consultant and actually transfusion medicine. Um, I'm president of Indian Society of Blood Transfusion and Immunometology, Punjab chapter. Uh, so today we, as the topic uh, above says, uh, understanding blood components and their clinical use. Uh, next please. As she told, I am conferred with three national awards. First is GR, GR Jolly Award in 2017 by, at Kota I was given. And uh, I'm the only one from Punjab state to uh, get it. So uh, second award is Please, next slide. Lifetime Achievement Award, which is, I think, dream of everyone. And it was conferred me uh, at Chennai in 2021, in February. 
and third is covid uh, next is next piece a uh, covid warrior award because uh, we did lot of work in the state of punjab during covid and uh, different cent centers were set uh, uh, for plasma uh, plasma paralysis and plasma was given to the affected person and uh, i was given being uh, president uh, leader of the team and is confirmed with covid warrior award in february 2020 again at chennai next please as she told i have uh, published uh, three books uh, first was uh, a fiction book jugnu's diary diaries i co-authored with the uh, engineer amok singh second book was transfusion update in 2015 and uh, here i was associate editor and it has 82 chapters and uh, transfusion support in every specialty and super specialty it has and the co chapters were contributed by the elite uh, uh, transfusion medicine faculty from all over india and third is uh, recently i published a book transfusion medicine for medical laboratory technologists uh, in february 2023 only at uh, lpu lovely professional university jalandhar and uh, it has 36 chapters because uh, a team at transfusion medicine uh, laboratory technologists are backbone of that so once we have a good team uh, we can uh, deliver better services so it has it, it has been widely appreciated all over the world because it is the first of its kind uh, no book was available as transfusion medicine for medical laboratory technologists and from over 20 uh, more than 20 countries uh, i have uh, received appreciation for that next please that is so wonderful madam uh, uh, i have contributed about six chapters in the books i have already told you that role of prp in region rate medicine uh, platelet rich plasma which is the uh, which is latest topic and ethical issues in transfusion medicine uh, was uh, they were these two chapters were uh, contributed in my book uh, transfusion update and introduction to transfusion medicine and common techniques in transfusion medicine and platelet rich plasma therapy these three chapters were contributed in the latest book of uh, transfusion medicine for medical laboratory technologists and one very uh, dear chapter to me is women in transfusion medicine it was contributed in the book given by side uh, this book was by the women for the women all ailments of women were uh, described in this chapter and my specialty transfusion medicine what is the role of women and uh, it had the indian scenario what is the indian scenario of women in transfusion medicine and what what is the uh, world scenario and uh, how indian women are contributing to as donor as recipient uh, it was discussed in that chapter and that is again very widely appreciated by my fraternity next please so coming to the topic uh, of today blood components uh, i would like to tell you all that uh, what will be the learning outcomes from this talk whenever we discuss a chapter or any presentation we always say why we are discussing it and uh, what are the various uh, aspects and how they are how can we achieve that so in this chapter we'll be discussing that so under these blood components preparations will be discussed equipment required types of components and clinical use of components next please so to understand better uh, in a better way uh, some terminology must be understood that is blood product is any therapeutic substance prepared from human blood and whole blood is unseparated blood collected into an approved container containing an anticoagulant preservative solution and what are blood components a constituent of blood separated from whole blood by a platelet rich plasma method which is the most common method used to prepare them all over india and world and uh, various uh, as we all know that there are cellular components and there are plasma so red blood cells white blood cells platelets we all know they are there and plasma and out of that plasma uh, uh, fresh frozen plasma we prepare cryoprecipitates Uh, which is rich in factor 8 and fibrinogen 
and which is used uh, for cases of hemophilia. Though uh, advancements are there and uh, many uh, factors, uh, they are available commercially also, but uh, at many centers, precipitate is used for uh, hemophilia patients. So coming to plasma derivatives, uh, they are different from components because uh, plasma under fractionation, human plasma proteins prepared under uh, 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 manufacturing conditions. Excuse me. Madam, uh, sorry to interrupt. I see a message from a participant. Uh, Srita, can you check? Uh, Sadhana Mohar is writing screen showing slides are not seen. Uh, yes, yes. There is a message. Sadhana has written it, yes. Yeah. Everyone can see slides. Can you please uh, confirm? So she must have... Uh, Sadhana, in case uh, it's a problem in your case, I request you to please log out and log in again. I think that should solve the problem if it is visible to all others. Yeah, thank you. Sorry, ma'am. Please continue. No, she has written that uh, they are visible. Okay, thank you. Yes, yes. Anyways, please continue. continue. Ma'am, please continue. So, plasma derivatives are human plasma proteins prepared under pharmaceutical manufacturing conditions, and they are albumin, coagulation factor concentrates, immunoglobulins. And uh, all these, like I told you, that uh, these are the components prepared by PRP method, like cellular and plasma. But there is another method to prepare them, and that is apheresis, which means to take away the desired component and return back all the other components of the blood to the donor. So uh, collecting red cells, white cells, plasma, and platelets directly from the donor and turning back the rest of the component. And depending upon the component uh, procured, it is retrocyte versus if red cells are taken and platelet versus if platelets are taken and plasma versus when plasma is taken and leukocyte versus when uh, white blood cells are taken and rest of the components are given to the donor. Next, please. Uh, next slide, please. So last uh, definition is blood component therapy. Uh, this is what why we are dis discussing it. It's a therapeutic use of blood components rather than whole blood. Because recently, uh, uh, this component therapy, eight to 10 years back only, it has come to the various centers in India. And uh, otherwise, whole blood was given to all patients. And today, even there are centers where whole blood is given. But uh, why component therapy is important? To treat a specific deficiency. If Red cells are required. Why to give plasma and other cells along to avoid volume overload? If a patient is say four grams hemoglobin and he needs um, five six units, then why to give whole blood? Only RBCs are to be given, so it will prevent volume overload, and uh, which is bad for heart cardiac overload. To reduce transfusion transmissible infections. Whenever uh, we uh, prescribe blood, it must be kept in mind that we are, as in the initial, uh, you said, patient safety. We are all working for patients. And if patient is harmed by this therapy, then why to transfuse blood? Being a transfusion medicine expert, I always say avoid giving blood. Best is not to transfuse if possible, but we have to give. Then to minimize transfusion reactions, these two things, transfusion, transfusion infections and transfusion reactions, they are the bad effects of transfusion therapy. So by giving component therapy, we can reduce these uh, to some extent. Next, please. So now coming to first that why blood components, again, uh, rational use of the scarce resource. All of us know that uh, 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 requirement is always more than the supply. So that way also it helps because one whole blood can serve three to four patients. And uh, deficiency of uh, supply and uh, uh, you know uh, use is reduced. Transfusion of desired component only, as I said, red cells, white cell, plasma, platelets, which is which is, whichever is needed that is given. And it improved quality and functional capacity of each blood component. And optimization of storage of blood components, different uh, components are stored at different temperatures in different equipment, and reduced risk of transfusion reaction, it is reputation, 
but it is important and reduced risk of transmitted transmitted infections. Next, please. So, how they are compared? Second part by how they are prepared. We need a certain uh, equipment for that. Uh, otherwise, whole blood is just take from the donor and test it and give it to the. But for component preparation, we need uh, various uh, equipment, and that is first of all bags, whether they are single, double, triple, quadruple. For single bag, we have whole blood, but in double, triple, and quadruple bags and LD bags, we have components, we can make components. Stripper is needed, balance is needed, rubber. In the next uh, uh, one of the videos, you will see how they are used, all the equipment. And rubber tube pieces to balance, refrigerated centrifuge in which uh, it is centrifugation is done, plasma expressor to separate the plasma for the from the red cell, blood bank refrigerator, deep freezer, platelet incubator and agitator for platelet uh, storage. And special equipment for special blood components, like will be modified blood components, we need special equipment. Laminar airflow for uh, sterility and sterile connecting device. If you want to separate some uh, uh, bag from the parent bag, then sterile connecting device to prevent uh, uh, infection. Next, please. So these are the various, uh, uh, you can say, uh, like double bag, triple bag, quadruple bag, and this is LD bag with the filter in. Pre-storage filtration with this. This is refrigerated centrifuge in which all the bags are put. And uh, this is stripper, this is plasma expressor, this is uh, sealer, tube sealer. This is platelet agitator and incubator. And this is blood bank refrigerator. This is deep freezer. And this is AFRSS machine. So all they are needed to make components. Next please. So what is the principle of making components in whether it is uh, AFRSS or it is PRP method? It is principle is uh, uh, depending upon specific gravity of every component, uh, they settle down according to their specific gravities. Higher the density, like RBCs, they're the highest and early settle down. Next please. Uh, this is a flow chart showing blood components preparation. Whole blood with salt spin is separated into blood, packed red cell and platelet rich plasma. Then when packed cells are washed, of course, washed red cells are modified red cells. And after giving hard spin to platelet rich plasma, a platelet concentrate that is 50 to 70 ml and fresh plasma is separated. And after freezing, it is fresh frozen plasma. And fresh frozen plasma, when after thawing again, centrifugation is done, cryoprecipitate are formed, and one is frozen plasma. Is so this is flow chart of how components are made from whole blood. Next, please. <clears throat> so in this video, this video is prepared by National Blood Transfusion Council. I really liked it. So I wanted to share with all of you that how components are prepared. Uh, Start, please. Preparation of blood components. In the past, whole blood was the only preparation that could be administered to replace red cells, platelets, coagulation factors, in addition to what patients required. This caused unnecessary administration of unwanted cells or plasma constituents. Large volumes of whole blood were needed to achieve satisfactory replacement of a particular component. Significant advances in transfusion medicine have been made whereby separation of blood can be done in a closed system and patients can be administered specific replacement therapy. One unit of donor's blood can be utilized for preparation of different components and thus can benefit more than one patient. Always prepare 100% components wherever facilities are available. The constituent achievement of quality is the ultimate aim of component preparation. Hence, strict adherence to the standard operative procedure is imperative. This video describes component preparation by platelet-rich plasma method, the most widely used method in our country. For component preparation, you need a separate, well-lit, air-conditioned, 
dedicated room of at least 50 square meters with workbench and electrical installation facilities. This room should be kept hygienic with proper pest control measures. What should be the ambient temperature for component separation? A. 37 to 39 degrees centigrade B. 20 to 25 degrees centigrade C. 30 to 35 degrees centigrade Yes, the correct answer is B, 20 to 25 degrees centigrade. Ambient temperature of the room should be maintained between 20 and 25 degrees centigrade. We need the following equipment to prepare and store blood components. Deep freezers, minus 30 to minus 40 degrees centigrade, minus 20 to minus 80 degrees centigrade. Blood bank refrigerator, 2 to 6 degrees centigrade. Platelet incubator with agitator maintained at plus 20 to plus 24 degrees centigrade. Refrigerated centrifuge. Laminar airflow. Weighing scale. Plasma expressor. Dielectric sealer. Stripper. Water bath, 37 degrees centigrade. Cryoprecipitate bath, 4 degrees centigrade. Dry rubber balancing material. Preliminary measures for component preparation. Ensure blood units are collected within 8 minutes. What is the maximum time limit for component separation from time of collection? A. 24 hours B. 20 hours C. 8 hours Twenty to twenty four degrees centigrade and should be separated within six to eight hours from the time of collection. Refrigerated centrifuge is brought to the desired temperature and kept ready. Blood bags must be weighed and balanced equally in opposing cups. Separation of platelet rich plasma from the whole blood by light spin. Program refrigerated centrifuge for light spin with appropriate speed and duration according to the manufacturer's instructions. The bag should be so placed that its broadside faces the outside wall of the cup. Close the lid and start the spin. Ensure that correct speed of centrifugation and time are maintained. When the spin is completed, gently remove the blood bags. Be careful not to disturb the separated layers of the components. Now, the primary bag is fixed carefully in the plasma expressor. Then, the hermetic seal is broken. Express approximately three-fourths of the plasma into the satellite bag and clamp the tubing. Make sure that adequate amount of plasma is present in the packed cells. Separate the primary bag with red cells and store in the blood bank refrigerator. If Adsol or SAG-M triple bag system is used, transfer all platelet-rich plasma into empty satellite bags and add additive solution to red cells. Seal the tubing of the bag with red cells and separate it from the satellite bags. In triple bags, transfer supinated plasma to platelet bag, which will be centrifuged later to separate plasma and platelets. One of the satellite bags containing platelet-rich plasma is processed further to prepare platelets. Separation of platelet concentrates and plasma from platelet-rich plasma by hard spin. Program the refrigerated centrifuge for hard spin as per manufacturer's instruction. Place platelet-rich plasma bag along with remaining satellite bags. Close the lid and start the spin. 
Similar steps followed in light spin will be repeated. Express approximately 200 milliliters of the supernatant platelet poor plasma into another empty satellite bag. Seal the tubing of the bag with plasma and separate it from the satellite bag with platelet concentrate. When can the platelet concentrate bag be stored in platelet agitator? A. Immediately after component separation. B. After leaving it undisturbed for one hour. C after storing in blood bank refrigerator for one day. Yes, the answer is B, after leaving it undisturbed for one hour. Ensure approximately 50 milliliters of plasma is left with platelets, which will be left undisturbed for one hour at room temperature. Then, at the end of one hour, the platelets are resuspended and stored at 20 to 24 degrees centigrade at constant agitation in a platelet incubator with agitator for a maximum period of five days. Make sure that the unlabeled surface of the platelet concentrate bags are facing up to facilitate better oxygen diffusion. Store the bag with plasma at minus 30 degrees centigrade or below in the deep freezer. What is the shelf life of fresh frozen plasma? A. One month at minus 30 degrees centigrade. B. One year at minus 30 degrees centigrade. C. Ten years at minus 30 degrees centigrade. Yes, the answer is B. One year at minus 30 degrees centigrade. Most labile coagulation factors are preserved for one year if fresh frozen plasma is kept at minus 30 degrees centigrade or below. Preparation of cryoprecipitate from fresh frozen plasma. Remove fresh frozen plasma bag from the deep freezer. Place it inside the plastic wrapper. Suspend the bag with wrapper at 4 degrees centigrade in a circulating water bath. Within 15 to 30 minutes, the plasma becomes slushy. Centrifuge the bag with plasma at 4 degrees centigrade with speed and duration as per manufacturer's instruction. Supernatant cryopore plasma is siphoned out, seal the tubing and separate the bags. Cryoprecipitate is stored at minus 30 degrees centigrade or below in the deep freezer for a period of one year. Things to remember. Ensure all the equipments are regularly calibrated. Ensure quality control for 1% of all components prepared. Efficacy of the prepared components is reassured by the following quality parameters. The primary goal of component therapy is to ensure quality with right components to the right patient in the right quantity at the right time. Separate components. Ensure quality. Uh, I think uh, video uh, is taking all of you to blood center to see the blood components, how they are prepared. Uh, uh, this is preparation uh, diagrammatically. When uh, it is separated, red blood cells, they settle down. And this is platelet-rich plasma. And this is sagam bag, additive solution. And uh, from this bag, we further uh, uh, divide it into platelet concentrates. 
and plated poor plasma and which is freezed and FFP, fresh frozen plasma is prepared. So this sagam bag is, after that, it is mixed with the red cells for uh, uh, giving it. So after adding uh, additive solution, it is red cell suspension. The red cell suspended in uh, additive solution. Uh, next, please. Now coming to blood components, once they are prepared, how they are stored. Uh, it is a nice, uh, uh, you can say, uh, representation. But uh, before I explain it, I would like, I always say that Almighty above, He has kept all components at one temperature of, of our body and with all functional, all are with functional capacity. So that is why he's called Al Almighty. But when we separate human beings, separate them, they have to be stored at different temperatures in different equipments. Like whole blood is to be stored at two to six degrees centigrade, plus minus one degree centigrade. And if it is with CPDA uh, anticoagulant, it is for 35 days. And whole blood uh, for component preparation is stored at one to six degrees centigrade. 20 plus minus 2 degrees centigrade uh, if to be used for preparation of platelets. Temperature is 22 plus minus 2 degree. And first 1 to 6 degree centigrade up to 8 hours before use and up to 24 hours before use. The red cells and whole blood, same temperature uh, and for 35 days. The red cells in additive solution, as I uh, uh, explained, they are kept at 2 to 6 degrees centigrade and uh, uh, Life shelf life is 42 days. So every effort is being made to extend the shelf life so that they are best used. And uh, adenine, uh, which is present in uh, this uh, uh, coagulant solution, it is it increases the shelf life. But we can increase the adenine to, a, uh, to an extent only. Otherwise, it is nephrotoxic. So 42 days is the maximum period we can store. Then plasma, fresh frozen, again, there are two types of freezers. Adam, again, I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, Dr. Dhanjay Vasukar is saying, Vasunkar is saying not able to see your slides and video. Huh? So, uh, I've seen a message in the chat box. Yes. Yeah. No, but he has written visible. He may have to check it from his end, doctor. Please okay, Dr. Dhanjay, please again. log out and log in again. Maybe uh, in your case, it is not visible. Okay. Everybody is so uh, the problem. writing so that they are visible. Yeah. So Maybe coming to uh, plasma, uh, there are two types of freezers, minus 20 to minus 40 and um, minus 30 to 80, minus 80. So they are kept for one year. Fresh frozen plasma has already been told. Plasma, when thawed, uh, it is to be kept at 30 to 30, between 30 to 37 degrees centigrade and transfused as soon as possible. Then plasma cryoprecipitate depleted uh, cryopore plasma to be kept at minus 20 to minus 40 and it is kept for four years, but uh, it lacks uh, uh, essential uh, coagulation factors. And platelets as already uh, in agitator incubator 22 plus minus two degree for five days. And uh, platelets pooled uh, again 22 plus minus two, and it is, if in a closed system, then five days. If it is open system, then they have to be used within 24 hours. And cryoprecipitate again, uh, 20, minus 20 to minus 40, and they're kept for one year. Next, please. So coming to uh, different uh, components, before we go into details, it is whole blood, which was being used for so many years. Source material for blood component preparation and really used for transfusion, except in these conditions where there is severe traumatic hemorrhage, more than 40%, 30 to 40% of your uh, volume of blood is lost in, like fracture femur or uh, severe accident, spleen rupture, or other conditions where it is there is loss of blood and uh, their whole blood can be given. And uh, uh, when platelets are not available in a military set, uh, settings, when platelets are not available, then whole blood can be given. And uh, most of the time, it is exchange transfusion in neonates where whole blood is needed. And that is, again, 
constituted blood that uh, we will be uh, studying later. And uh, these are the indications. Then description is, as I told you, in double bags, triple bags, 450, 350, quadruple bags, uh, they are uh, with CPD. If it is CPD only, then 21 days. If it's CPDA1, then it is for 35 days. If additive solutions are added, then it is for 42 days. Labi coagulation factors deteriorate rapidly in whole blood and platelets activate a loose functionality and viability uh, uh, within a very, uh, within few hours. Next please. Next slide. Whole blood continuing, description again. Uh, when additive solutions are added, it is 510 milliliters total volume and 63% anticoagulant, hematocrit is 35. Uh, it is important for quality control of these uh, whole blood and no functional patterns, no labile curve. Indications again, it is repetition. The red cell replacement is acute blood loss with hypovolemia, exchange transfusion patients, needing red cell transfusions where red cell concentrates or suspensions are not available. Next, please. Now we are coming to the real use of whole blood. That is again reconstituted whole blood. Indicated in neonatal exchange transfusion, pooling of two components, group O RBCs with no antigens and group AV plasma with no antibodies. So when there are no antigens, no antibodies, there, it is inert blood, it is harmless. So that is why it is used for exchange of the neonates uh, for exchange transfusion. And it may be with or without irradiation or with or without washing. Next, please. So these are the, what are the various cells like how, why, how, and what? What is cellular components? They have been told already, but modified are saline washed, leukodepleted, irradiated, frozen packed red cells, and packed red cells aliquid for new, uh, small children. And platelets are random donor platelets and single donor platelets. And the modified platelets are leukodepleted platelets, irradiated platelets, washed platelets, platelets suspended in additive solution, cryopreserved platelets, and single donor, that is aphrasis platelets. And granulocyte concentrates are pooled buffy coat derived or aphrasis derived. So these are the various, um, you can say, components. And next, please. These are our cellular. Now we are coming to plasma. Fresh frozen plasma, as already been told, cryopure plasma, liquid plasma, these are modified ones, recovered plasma, pool plasma, frozen dried plasma, pathogen, inactivated plasma. Pathogen inactivated plasma is uh, uh, very good, but it is uh, the, the equipment is very, very costly. And uh, for, for information to all of you, I would like to tell that it is only available in India at uh, KG and C Lucknow. Otherwise, all over India, there is no pathogen reduction. Uh, of course, in foreign countries, it is uh, being used very uh, frequently. Next, please. So coming to packed red cells, again, repetition. Indications are anemic patients with impaired oxygenation used with crystalloid replacement fluids or colloid solutions in acute blood loss. Next, please. Uh, previous slide, pre pre previous slide. Previous slide, huh? Uh, packed red blood cells are because they're packed due to specific gravity and plasma is taken out. Uh, they are also known as red cell concentrates and concentrated red cells or plasma reduced blood. But when additive solution is added, they are red cell suspensions when additive solutions are added. Next, please. Uh, modified PRBCs are saline washed, irradiated, already told in the what are the components. And one by one, we'll be discussing. Next, please. So, like saline washed red cells are, uh, they are the, uh, they are washing with normal saline, removes electrolytes and 99% of the plasma proteins, which can be uh, the reason for uh, allergic reactions to the patient. So, when patients are having repeated severe allergic reactions, washed red cells are indicated. And they remove 85% of the leukocytes from PRBCs not enough to prevent alarmization. Leuco reduced components when log three reduction is done, only then they can prevent alarmization. Indications I have already told you, when in open system they are washed, they are to be used within 24 hours. When there is closed system, they can be used for 14 days. In patients, uh, they are indicated in patients with repeated severe allergic reactions to standard access. Next please. 
irradiated red blood cells to prevent transfusion associated graft versus host disease which is a bad disease can take life of the patient and uh, can occur uh, many months after the uh, transfusion so inactivation of t lymph which is because of the t lymphocytes of the donor and using gamma rays uh, these are the various uh, radi radiology department uh, uh, you you can see specifications uh, how, how much uh, 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 this uh, irradiation to be given and uh, in irradiation sensitive labels should be used so that we know that it is irradiated blood irradiation in flux of potassium from red cells and they are stored for 28 days expiry date uh, which ever is earlier indications are neonatal and fetal recipients of intrauterine transfusions because in uh, even in india they are being done selected immunocompromised recipients and uh, cellular components from a blood relative and uh, uh, bone marrow transplantation patients uh, are given irradiated Uh, red blood cells next please buffy coat reduced red blood cells with the additive solution here the buffy coat is uh, removed uh, with uh, subsequent resuspension of the red cells in additive solution additive solution is sagam it is sodium chloride adenine glucose mannitol carbonate citrate phosphate or uh, 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 guanosine in varying various combinations and amounts so they should have uh, 5 into 10 to the power 6 white cells per pack Uh, uh, prepared by filtration through a leukocyte depleting filter hemoglobin concentration and hematocrit depend upon whether the product is red cell concentrate or red cell suspension in suspension it is again uh, reduced leukocyte depletion removes the risk of transmitting of cytomegalovirus this is very very important because cmv uh, under drug and cosmetic act in india is not uh, mandatory to be tested but if we give uh, leukocyte depleted blood cmv can be prevented in foreign countries it is mandatory to test for uh, cmv the volume of additive solution depends upon whole blood 100 into 450 and uh, 80 into 350 uh, uh, blood additive uh, addition of additive solution increases shelf life to 42 days already mentioned next please advantages what are the advantages prevents febrile non hemolytic reactions Uh, as a transfusion expert i have seen febrile non hemolytic reactions they are the most common reactions in multi transfusion patients for example thalassemia but when reaction occurs everybody is uh, panicky about it so if we give leuco reduced components to them there won't be any febrile non hemolytic reaction there where there is a 1 degree rise in temperature and there are uh, febrile uh, you can say uh, convulsions not convulsion febrile uh, uh, they are having uh, shivering shivering so actually aluminization multi transfusion patients and transmission of uh, leukotropic viruses especially cytomegalovirus again it is repetition and other methods to prepare one is buffy coat removed second is this filters are used you must have seen some patients on bed filters are given but pre storage filtration is uh, best when Fil bags or bags they come with filters. When it is uh, collected in uh, bags with filters, and before issue and bedside filtration, uh, many uh, patients are using that. Next, one. indications are red cell components from which WBCs are removed are indicated in febrile non hemolytic reactions to red cell transfusion, like multi transfusion patients, for example, thalassemia. Again, next piece. packed red cell liquids it is one of the modified small volume transfusion in pediatric patients for example a pre term baby is born and uh, he is anemic so many trans small small transfusions are needed so there are paddy bags also multiple pack system or sterile connecting device from the your parent bag you just cut it off with sterile connecting device for uh, uh, septic aseptic uh, precautions expiry date of the smaller rbc unit the same as the original unit and system has been maintained uh, uh, in multiple pack system sterile connecting device advantages are uh, limited donor exposure because from one parent bag is only uh, the the small child is not exposed to so many donors and decreased bed wastage prevention of circulatory overload and expiration date of the aliquot rbc unit here is also the same as the parent pack next please frozen or cryopreserved prbcs as i was telling you everybody wants ki 
uh, uh, shelf life should be extended so that we can use the bags for many, but adenine cannot be, uh, uh, you know, increased because of the uh, kidney. Uh, uh, it, it has, it is um, uh, cytotoxic, uh, nephrotoxic, sorry. So uh, frozen RBCs can be used, stored for 10 years. And uh, they are uh, especially the very rare blood groups. Indications are rare phenotypes, which are very rare. And uh, blood inventory for emergency use in disasters, like in disasters, they can be used. Next, please. Uh, Cryopreservation with different uh, preservatives. Uh, this uh, uh, this uh, slide is showing. And uh, uh, for how much uh, 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 concentration percentage they can be used. So this is in detail, nitrogen, uh, liquid nitrogen. Uh, next, please. Once uh, they are frozen and recover, how can we recover the uh, frozen? They are thawed at 37 degrees centigrade with gentle agitation, taking about 10 minutes for complete thawing. And glycerol must be removed gradually. If we do it rapid, uh, uh, then it can cause hemolysis. So usually open system only 24 hours when stored at 1 to 6 degrees centigrade can be used and automated closed systems are also available. Final product should be free of cryoprotective agent and minim, minimum of hemolysis and yield at least 80% of the RBC is originally frozen. Next, please. Now coming to plasma, the second larger uh, product. A description, I think uh, I have repeated it many times. Once collected, such whole blood units should be transported in ice or um, uh, packs maintaining a temperature below 10 degrees centigrade, frozen rapidly to maintain coagulation factor activity, especially labile coagulation factors such as 5 and 8, and uh, deteriorate rapidly if stored at 2 to 6 degrees. So uh, temperature is very important. Plasma contains proteins such as coagulation factors, albumin and immunoglobulins, and source material for plasma derivatives. Next, please. So this is uh, not, uh, this was not described in that uh, video uh, by NBTC. And uh, it is blast freeze at minus 80 degrees centigrade. Once you collect plasma for a whole blood, it must be blast freeze at minus 80. That preserves the Levi factors. And then you can store in minus 20 to minus 40 once they are blast freeze. So this is, this was not told in that video. Uh, and thought later in time of need. Next please. Modified plasma, what are the components? Fresh frozen pathogen inactivated plasma, which is very important. PF24, freeze dried pool plasma, liquid plasma, cryoprecipitate depleted or cryoprecipitate poor plasma, cryopoor plasma, recovered plasma, source plasma, pool plasma. Next, please. So, fresh frozen plasma, we are already familiar with. Once uh, red cells in plasma, uh, uh, PRP, they are separated. Then PRB is again given hard spin to have plated concentrates and plasma is there. And plasma once frozen, it is fresh frozen plasma to have uh, labile coagulation factors. Next, please. What are the indications in liver diseases in warfarin anticoagulant overdose, depletion of coagulation factors in patients receiving large volume transfusions and uh, DIC, which is a double-edged uh, weapon, uh, uh, and uh, coagulation, coagulopathy uh, is there. Uh, so it is a very difficult to manage. Uh, but I remember one patient that uh, she was a doctor. After delivery, she had DIC. And every day I used to visit her in ICU and she was saved because uh, only 5% uh, survival is there in DIC. Thrombotic, thrombocytic, clinic, purpura. Uh, these are the indications. Next, please. Pathogen inactivated. Uh, so it is, uh, it is uh, pathogen inactivation is done with various uh, methylene blue solvent detergent or uh, uh, other uh, things, uh, other chemicals and uh, plasma refrozen after removal of uh, methyl blue after using filters and 15 to 20% less factor rate or fibrinogen than untreated plasma. Next please. Pathogen activated plasma, uh, amotolosalin chemical is used, uh, prepared from whole blood by apheresis, followed by its activation using UV light. Frozen for storage after removing this uh, chemical and doesn't affect the activity levels of coagulation and endothermic factors. Next, please. Uh, 
Uh, riboflavin is one of the uh, pathogen activa uh, uh, used for pathogen activation. And 1% tri and butyl phosphate and 1% Trinton X100 is also used. Next, please. So what are the indications for pathogen inactivated blood components? Pathogen inactivation technologies may make the blood supply safer by broadly eliminating infectious organisms such as malaria, Zika virus without the need to screen for specific pathogens. Another potential benefit is in reducing the need to radiate blood products if they are pathogenic, but uh, they are very costly and uh, uh, only, only uh, institute is KGMC Lucknow uh, in India. Next, please. Uh, this PF24, as the name suggests, it is uh, uh, plasma frozen within 24 hours after phlebotomy, and shelf life is 24 hours. Plasma held at room temperature up to 24 hours after phlebotomy, and then it is PF24 and RT, room temperature 24, it is known as. And major difference is uh, FFE is separated from a whole blood and frozen at 18 degree, minus 20 to minus 40, within eight hours of collection, whereas FP24 is frozen within 8 to 24 hours after collection. And indication is it is a, a, a created to cope with increasing plasma demand. And the noted incidence of transmitted lung, uh, related uh, lung injury with, uh, with a suspected association with plasma from multiparous women having elevated NTHLA and NT neutrophil antibodies. So it is indicated in that. Next, please. Uh, frozen dried pool plasma, as I said, it is obsolete product and it is not uh, uh, recommended by Drug and Cosmetic Act in India. And uh, previously it was thought that it could be used in uh, disasters and all. Next, please. Liquid plasma is plasma separated from whole blood unit and stored at plus 4 degrees centigrade. No coagulation factors are there and storage at one to six days centigrade for up to five days beyond the whole blood's expiration date. Even whole blood is expired, then even then it can be stored. And indication is it doesn't need to be thawed. That is very important because thaw, thawing of uh, plasma, frozen plasma takes about uh, 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, and uh, uh, in this, uh, we need not to thaw it. And uh, so it can be quite useful in the initial treatment of patients who are undergoing massive transfusion. Next, please. Cryoprecipitate cryopore plasma is approximately half of the fibrogen factor it has been removed as cryoprecipitate, but which contains all other plasma constituents. Indication, it is uh, uh, cryopore plasma contains all the coagulation factors except uh, von Willebrand and factor eight. Therefore, it can be used in the treatment of rodenicide toxicity as well as the replacement of proteins like albumin and immunoglobulins. Next, please. Recovered plasma or source plasma, it is produced by separating donated whole blood into cellular components and the manufacture and processed into derivatives like immunoglobulins and albumin. And source plasma is collected through apheresis. And a process that takes only plasma and uh, other things are uh, returned back. Indicated in immunodeficiency, primary immunodeficiency, hemophilia and genetic lung disease, as well as trauma and burns and shock. Next, please. Pool plasma is done for therapeutic plasma exchange, multiple liters of single procedure and pooling up to three liters at a time. It is a large pack and it is indicated in primary and secondary immunodeficiency syndrome and a variety of autoimmune disorders. Next, please. Crayon, coming to cryoprecipitate, uh, already I have told you that they are made from fresh frozen plasma and uh, contains half of the factor eight and fibrinogen in the donated whole blood. Factor 8 is 80 to 100 international units per pack. So, dose is calculated with this, how many bags are to be given. And minimum 12 uh, bags of cryoprecipitate pooling is done for the final uh, dose. Indications in uh, one glimmer factor, factor 8, factor uh, 13, as source of fibrinogen in acquired coagulopathies like DIC. Fibrinogen is very much needed. Next, please. Now coming to platelet considerations, which are very common among people when dengue came, they always they are always after uh, platelet uh, platelet uh, infusions, transfusions. So they are a single unit, as I told you, 50 to 70 ml of or 60 ml of plasma is uh, recovered from one whole blood or 50 ml bag, 
and uh, red cells are very less, leukocytes are very less. Indications in thrombocytopenia and platelet function defects, functional defects. Prevention of bleeding due to thrombocytopenia, such as in bone marrow failure. Next, please. And the platelet concentrated by apheresis, they are very superior leukodepleted and a large amount of, uh, they are equal to six RDPs, six random donor platelets. Those is one apheresis platelets. They are superior, but they are costly and need special equipment for that. Next, please. Granulocytes white blood cells, uh, though they are not uh, very commonly uh, collected, but they can be collected, indicated in severe neutropenic patients with bacterial and fungal infection, unresponsive to appropriate antimicrobial therapy. But they, they can't be used indefinitely and should not be used a patient's own neutrophil production is not expected to recover. Because he always says, whichever uh, component we are giving, that is just temporary to tide over that critical period. Because patient will be uh, all right when his own cells are being formed by the bone marrow when that critical period is over. So if just to, uh, uh, just to recover the, uh, that, if bone marrow failure is there, we, there is no use of giving uh, white blood cells. Next, please. So quality control of the blood components as a NBTC video showed, it is a total one lecture. Because in, in, in short, I have written that must be done right from vein of the donor to the vein of the patient. Like right from cleaning phlebotomy site to the transfusing bladder component in the patient at ward level. And it includes material management, equipment management, process management, documents and records, monitoring and assessment. Once we are doing all this, then we can have process improvement. So this is a whole uh, lecture, a quality control of the blood components. So in nutshell, I have uh, covered it like that. Next piece. So these are the references. And the, here I forgot to uh, write Google Baba because Google is a, if you have basic knowledge, uh, you can always have a help from Google. And uh, next please, next please. So conclude as uh, uh, NBTC also concluded. The right blood component in right quantity, in right quality, to the right patient at the right time and at the right cost also. Not that you have some very rare component and you are giving it for 10,000 rupees, which is costing you only 1,000. So it should be at right cost. And cost is uh, being monitored by National Battery Stream Council. All blood banks have processing charges and displayed uh, inside and outside blood center so that nobody can take uh, uh, extra charge. Next, please. So thank you all for listening me <laughs> so long. A uh, uh, few slides I forgot to add that uh, uh, in clinical settings for all clinical colleagues here, that over the group can also be uh, blood components can be issued. If you have uh, recipient is A positive and you don't have A positive component. Uh, there are different uh, uh, components, different O positive can be given for packed red cells. Uh, first choice is of course the same. Second is that. So that is also useful if, uh, and uh, before I uh, uh, say thank you, uh, this is the message I want to give that God doesn't want anything from us. He only expects us to return the soul with the same purity as it was blessed by him at the time of our birth. Thank you so much. Let's all make our souls pure. Knowledge. Yes, 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 certainly. Ma'am, I think there are a few questions. Uh, yes. Because your, exp uh, your presentation was quite self-explanatory, but a few questions, uh, which one is from uh, Komal Khurana. Uh, can we store fresh frozen plasma directly in mi minus 40 rather than uh, blast freezing at uh, minus 80 if you could no, throw no, more blast some freezing is, freeze. blast freezing is done for a few minutes only so that uh, labile coagulation factors are uh, stored it is for few minutes only then after storage is it is minus 20 to minus 40 only if you don't have minus 80 then minus 40 is okay uh, but the uh, level of uh, uh, keeping storing the labile coagulation factors will be little less but otherwise, if minus 80 you have, you must blast freeze and then store in minus 40, minus 20 to minus 40. Ma'am, would you... Uh... 
Could, could you slightly explain a bit more about, uh, I mean, the advantage of blast free is because many people may not have minus 80. I think that's the question. Yes, yes. Then they can, uh, they can, st they can, uh, minus 20 to minus 40. They can freeze from, the, from that. Okay. And, and they are stored for one year. Yes, so. What is the advantage Some people of say that free? minus 80, if you store, they can be uh, for uh, five years. But uh, for all practical purposes, FFP is for one year only. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, another question is, what is the best method of transportation in hilly terrain uh, apart from air transport by air? Any other method is there for transportation? Uh, this is by Dalit Majidar. Please repeat the question. Um, uh, it's written in our chat box. Uh, what is the best method of transportation in hilly terrain other than by air? Uh, uh, in, in which settings you want to tra uh, transport? Like, uh, Lalit, could you uh, we transport blood from uh, uh, blood, uh, blood nation camps to our center? So I think then they should I'll request. I request Lalit to unmute and ask the question. Uh, Lalit, if you're there, could you please put your question? Camps can be stored in domestic. No, no, no. Uh, Prasanna Kumar is having a question that. Uh, Man, PRBC packs can be stored in the no, 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 not at all. Not to be stored in domestic refrigerators. Uh, you all know that domestic refrigerator costs 30,000 and the blood bank refrigerator costs around 5 lakhs. So there must be some difference uh, in, in that. Uh, that is technically it is wrong to store. Uh, here I would like to uh, share with you all that at uh, when I was at Medical College Patiala, Government Medical College Patiala, uh, we uh, had a, um, you know, legal case against us that uh, uh, they, they took the blood from blood center and they stored it in deep freezer, the freezer of the domestic refrigerator. And freezer when you RBCs are hemolyzed, so that reaction, uh, that blood caused reaction to their patient and they were uh, having a legal, uh, but we are expert in transmitting medicine, so we proved it in court that it was their fault. They, they preserved it in deep freezer and uh, freezer of the domestic refrigerator. That, that is not domestic refrigerator is not in the picture at all. Not at all. Yeah, so they are mentioning that in some hospitals they are doing so. I think that is wrong. Really if they're doing quality. it, uh, uh, like you should all uh, uh, enlighten them not to use. <laughs> Otherwise, they can be legally uh, uh, punished. They can be legally punished. Um, Ma'am, uh, Lalit has put the question. He's unable to mute. He's saying my question yes, is... Yes, yes, unable to... Uh, my question is transporting from centers to hospitals in mountains. Uh, transportation temperature is there are vans uh, there are vans having uh, deep freezers and uh, um, at minus 20 to 40 and uh, 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 their transportation vans they are called and many centers are having it like in Punjab uh, uh, Punjab State Blood Refrigeration Council is giving uh, transportation vans and uh, like vaccines are carried out in various part, parts of India so we have transportation vans which can take blood from one center to like all over India. It can be transported with special refrigerators inside, deep freezers and refrigerators. They are called transportation vans. Like vaccines are carried out at to, to maintain the cold chain. Cold chain must be maintained during transportation. Any other question? Yeah, there is one, though there are a lot of messages on excellent presentation, but few questions, uh, you know, for further clarification is, one is from Thomas PC, he's saying, before transfusion, is it necessary that blood checking is done by the doctor itself or the nurse supervisor? No, no, it should be done by the uh, doctor. It should be uh, uh, checked by the doctor. Because okay. it is always better to to have check at two levels <laughs> rather than one. No? If, if staff nurse is also checking, you're also checking. Two people are, are always uh, better and they make 11. So it, it will be better. And uh, doctors uh, and nurses, uh, they should both uh, check the, before it is transported. 
So, ma'am, uh, one question I I have. Uh, you had mentioned about the uh, the use of uh, path I mean, about pathogen in inactivated plasma, which is very rare, and in India, it is stored only in KGMC. Look now. Yes. So, I wanted to ask, what are the indications for use of such a rare, uh, you know, kind of a blood product component? Because of the cost, is it is not being uh, uh, practiced. But the centers which can afford, they can have it. The, the, it is very useful for and uh, no need of irradiation. Because as I have told you that transfusion, transmissible infections are a nuisance of blood transfusion. So when once they are used, there, there is Zika virus, other viruses, malaria, they're all, uh, you know, gone with the pathogen reduction. Treated plasma is... Uh, uh, very good for uh, uh, where, wherever it is indicated plasma. Uh, it, it is to avoid the uh, uh, pathogens to be transfused to the patient. So we must uh, uh, benefit the patient, not harm the patient. So these are all levels, you know, like uh, in testing also, you must be knowing that uh, some people are doing rapid tests, some people are doing ELISA, some people are doing CLIA, some people are doing NAT. But under Drug and Cosmetic Act, we are to do minimum ELISA and now in 2020 uh, notification, they have allowed the clear also. So we are to go according to law. I always say that our department is uh, legal department. We are working under law and we cannot, uh, you know, compromise with quality. Uh, we, we are being checked every, uh, uh, you know, uh, repeatedly by Drug and Cosmetic uh, Act inspectors and uh, NABH assessors. So we are, we cannot compromise with quality. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, I request all participants to please uh, fill in the feedback form. I, it is displaying in the chat box in your- uh, Magesh, uh, Magesh has a question. If we have more units during that time, yeah. some of our refrigerators are not working. Shall we store in cold room? To, uh, yes, yes, of course. Uh, storage uh, is done in refrigerators as well in, as well as in cold rooms. Uh, definitely you can store. At some my center at uh, Patiala, we were uh, storing it in a uh, cool room only because uh, with the larger capacity, we had the around 3000 capacity of storage. And refrigerators are for small centers, which are storing, you can say up to 300 units or uh, 500 units. But for more thousands units, we, we have to store in cool, cold room only. But temperature is again for whole blood and PRBC is two to six. Uh, can I ask question to uh, my audience also? Uh, why it is two degree and why it is six degree? I always ask my PGs and uh, my uh, 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 audience that why not uh, one degree and uh, eight degree? Anybody? Anybody? Chat me any anybody? I, I, I can tell because below two can degree. Can you unmute and answer? Yes. Oh, please. Uh, Who's answering? Give it to her. Ma'am, please repeat your question. Uh, everybody is saying that we are to store whole blood and PRBCs at two to six degrees centigrade. So my question is why not uh, below two degree and why not uh, above six degree? Anybody? So there are no answers. I must tell her that below degree, below two degree, there will be hemolysis of RBCs. And above six degree, there will be uh, contamination. So there are to be every, every line written in textbooks has a study with it. So two degree to six degree. Why 18 years for donation and 65 years donation? Why? Donor should be between 18 to 65. Anybody? Anybody from the audience? Eighteen degree is the uh, eighteen years is the age of bone marrow maturation. Bone marrow is matured at eighteen age. And eighteen is age to donate. Eighteen is age to vote. And eighteen is age to drive. So at 18 degree, your bone marrow is mature. And if you donate blood, you are not affected. 
Otherwise, it cannot be replenished, replenished in three months. And 65 years means bone marrow is fibrosed with increasing age. And it is not uh, after 65, you are okay. You're not on medication. You can donate uh, till 65. So uh, and likewise, every line in a textbook has an answer to it and has a study behind. Study was done on so many uh, patients to write a line in a textbook. Any other questions? Uh, there is one question. Uh, uh, is there any side effects for the donor who donated yes, yes. before 18 if years? There, is, there are side effects months. for donor who donated before 18 years. Uh, like question, your question has come now, but I have already explained. Because your bone marrow is not mature and you have donated around 350 to 450 ml of your blood, it cannot be replen replenished uh, uh, with immature bone marrow. And you may have anemia afterwards. I have seen one, uh, it, is, it is the question age, uh, but uh, we always say no, you should not, you should not donate before three months. This is also uh, noted because uh, it is the time your bone marrow replenish, replenishes your lost uh, uh, blood. And I have seen a case a donor in my uh, uh, Rajendra Hospital, Government Medical College, Patiala, who was donating blood every week by telling lies. So there is no meter to know that he donated one week before. We just ask that, have you donated three months before? So he got his two gram hemoglobin and was admitted in our hospital. So these are the all practical, uh, you know, uh, practical uh, experiences uh, which are so every line again I say every line written in a textbook must be followed guidelines otherwise you can be jailed any any blood center in charge can be jailed if he is not following uh, guidelines any higher hemoglobin level for blood donation no it is 12.5 both for males and females uh, one reading only 12.5 it's not that females should have less or males because it is the quality uh, hemoglobin uh, when transfused to the patient, he will be benefited. If a donor has 8 grams or 9 grams and you bleed without guidelines, then patient will not be benefited. Your clinician will say, we have transfused 6 units and uh, hemoglobin is not increasing. So quality must be compromised. People will say, Bada doctor is bad, it's not bad, it's blood is bad. Females are very bad, but no, quality should never be compromised right from the vein of the donor to the vein of the patient. Uh, Ma'am, is it myth or uh, true? Uh, due to blood donation, will lose body weight? No. Some people, they gain weight after blood transfusion. So it's, it's not, it's a myth. Uh, it has no relation, scientific relation with. So Madhu Kangnein wants to know turnaround time. So turnaround time is when you receive the sample and you issue the uh, issue to the patient. Turnaround time is of two types. It is emergency turnaround time and a routine. So emergency turnaround time should be less than 30 minutes. You should have a SOP to issue blood uh, within half an hour because tests are done. They take at least half an hour to uh, to issue the blood. So, uh, turnaround time should be in OT. Uh, you can say patients, they, their sample come one day before. So, it can be more than one and a half hours even. So, one, even 24 hours turn in, in OT when blood is needed because patients, they come one day prior to the operation and uh, it is issued after that. After how many hours of alcohol intake can a person donate blood? Uh, the person should not have taken alcohol uh, one day before. Why? Uh, so Amkit Jain will tell me why it is uh, why it is there. Why we say that uh, alcohol should not have been taken? Please, Ankit, unmute Ankit, and answer. Unmute and answer, please. Yes. Please Otherwise, please I will tell. <laughs> yeah. We can every question, now. every question, a uh, question in your, uh, you know, chat box. Yes. Every <laughs> question. Mind has a reason and has a answer. So you have asked that uh, uh, alcohol intake 
person should not have taken a cohort one day prior and the, on the day of donation that that uh, night ankita's answer is but why beta why scientific basis of it why he should not have taken alcohol the 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 person will ask madam why you are uh, uh, not taking my blood is there any scientific reason for that there is scientific reason because alcohol with alcohol your vessels are dilated and your volume will be decreased in that once vessels are dilated and if you give blood you will have there is a gush pattern you will fall if you have taken alcohol on that day some people they uh, lie also <laughs> because there is no meter to judge that uh, person has taken alcohol and the, on the day of uh, donation also the same reason blood vessels are dilated and we should rather we ask to have more fluids to uh, recover the blood volume so uh, you will fall down if you have taken alcohol on that day or on the day of donation night so one question is there that uh, therapeutic phlebotomy hemoglobin it is uh, more than 17 More than seventeen grams per cent. Uh, it should be. Uh, it should be uh, investigated. Right. Some hospital setups take blood if the donor's hemoglobin is around seventeen and eighty. Bilkul. No, they should not take. Uh, they should not. Uh, they must investigate because our duty is not only collect blood from donors. Our duty is to donor safety as well as patient safety. Many practitioners they are advising. that to go and give blood <laughs> you will be all right ki <laughs> uh, many patients say khoon vad gaya ji one rmp ne kaha ki ja ke katwa do but uh, um, that must be investigated before we take that because otherwise it is uh, if it is polycythemia then we have to discard the blood because it is pre cancerous condition so for therapeutic phlebotomy hemoglobin 1718 must be investigated and other other signs symptoms also should be considered uh some possible okay ma'am thanks ma'am okay <laughs> ma'am there are other questions question. yeah okay. how many consents are needed uh, in a for a transfusion in a day uh, per admission per admission uh, one consent must be there and i think for every uh, form request we receive we have a consent behind that so that is uh, patient consent is important and uh, if uh, um, uh, more if uh, for massive transfusion uh, uh, you can uh, take after 24 hours but i think one consent uh, uh, for from patient is okay with one uh, it, it is a debatable some people they should be taken every uh, 24 hours some people but i think one admission one consent for blood transfusion it is okay because with every request we get consent of the patient on the back of the uh, request form it's okay ma'am there is another question <laughs> thank you for answering <laughs> very patiently to each and every one uh, why tat of ot count and how what is the tat of ot count and how i, I told her that uh, turn around time ot uh, in operation theater what is the condition of the patient if it is emergency then immediately uh, without cross match with consent of course it can be given but if in emergency other emergencies uh, the cross match uh, must be done otherwise patient may be harmed so in ot if a patient is profusely bleeding the same blood group patient, uh, uh, because otherwise we lose the patient so immediately but i think in ot every uh, doctor or surgeon has arranged blood before he goes enters the ot so uh, uh, for that time uh, that blood can be given and uh, other uh, one two cross matched bloods must be there in blood center before they go for and for every must, maximum blood ordering schedules are there for appendectomy for uh, an uh, hysterectomy for other all operations have maximum blood ordering schedules means Uh, type and screen they must uh, arrange according to that so uh, in your hospital transfusion committees you should decide 
by where all your clinical user departments are there and latest is patient blood management and everybody should be involved in that so that again one uh, uh, one target only donor safety and patient safety vein of the donor to vein of the patient uh, we are not to we, we are there to uh, save donors as well as patients I think all the questions are answered. Yeah, one question is, uh, will there be recording available to the participant? It is your department, Reema. You should answer it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, I think the yeah the presentation will be available at Kahoo's uh, website. Yes. And it, must be, it must be shared. Because as yes, I said, you jale baant dene se jale kam nahi hote. So it right. must be spread. Yeah. And there is one more question uh, yes. from Mangesh. Uh, they, if we have more units during that time, if some of the refrigerators are not working, so can they temporarily store in? Uh, I have already answered it. They should. Okay. They can store in blood uh, uh, stores, like. Okay. Mm -hmm. Walk-in cool rooms are there. Walk-in cool rooms. Uh, refrigerators are for small blood centers. Walk-in cool rooms are for bigger centers. Answered it. Thank you so much, ma'am. I think all the questions and queries, it's been really nice, the participants. And thanks to all the participants for uh, staying uh, tuned and putting your questions and freely interacting and chatting. And I think uh, it has been a wonderful, wonderful <laughs> beginning of the understanding of blood components and transfusion medicine. It's an exhaustive topic and much more to be learned. It's quite still, you know, uh, I mean, much more to unveil. And uh, Madam, we will request. I, I thank all the participants for staying with me for so long. Uh, it is their, uh, uh, you know, education uh, curiosity that uh, they stay. Thank you so much.